Hello Trainers and welcome to a new video on the total supply of cryptocurrencies and the effect that that has on the price. I've done a video like this before where we looked at different exchanges and the inflow and the outflow and the effect that that has on price using a website called Token Analyst. Today we're looking at a different website called Glassnode, Glassnode Studio. This was shared with me in my Discord and I mean I've been blown away by how cool of a website it is. So the goal for today's video is we're going to be taking a different approach, not really a order depth or a price action approach looking at demand, but we're looking at supply today. The total supply of cryptocurrency um, on cryptocurrency exchanges. So what you're looking at here is just the main interface that they have, and we're going to start off with the ZRX cryptocurrency. What I like to do is just look at activity on Binance. That's just something that I do because if I'm looking to trade ZRX, I'm probably going to do it on Binance. So I'm going to look at the activity there instead of looking at global. You can look at either. And, you know, zoom for the time frame. Now what you see here is the total supply of ZRX on Binance, which is $26 million worth, are currently held on Binance. And this is the amount of supply. Uh, so 11.3% of ZRX is on Binance. And if we look at all exchanges, 16.61% of all ZRX is on exchanges. Okay. And this is just the change in balance over that preset time frame. And this is how many deposits and withdrawals there have been. So there have been slightly more deposits than withdrawals of ZRX. This is the balance over time. So if I just show you this, this is the balance of ZRX over time. And this is the price of ZRX. Now down here you can see how many transfers are coming in to the Binance exchange of ZRX. And uh, blue, you can see how many transfers are going out. Okay. And then these are just the transactions, you know, I like to do uh, exclude in-house. You can see here, you know, the biggest ZRX transaction was, was here, only $16,000 worth, but um, this was the biggest within uh, the last 24 hours. And if I go to the seven day, um, this is going to change to something probably a lot larger. Yeah, $126,000. Okay. Now, what you're probably wondering at this point is, okay, how do I interpret this to actually make me money? That's... Typically, most people's questions whenever I show a new tool is, what can I actually do with this to make me money in the short term? Good news is there's ways you can make money with this kind of strategy in the short term, medium term, and long term, but we're going to be focusing a little bit more on the short term. Now, typically, cryptocurrency exchanges, when you see a large influx or a lot of a certain cryptocurrency being deposited, a lot of traders are going to say that's bearish. Reason being is, let's say that the total supply on Binance of, of ZRX increases by like, 10%. So there's 10% more ZRX on Binance all of a sudden, more supply of it. Well, that's telling me that perhaps a large trader deposit that so they can sell that ZRX for a different cryptocurrency, um, which will likely drive the cryptocurrency down as they sell, you know, something like that. Now, here's something that's pretty cool that actually happened. We can see a large influx happen where the ZRX supply on Binance went from 113 million. It went up to a high of what we went from 113.284 up to a high of 113.347. So an increase of about, what was that, 120,000 ZRX today. And then price just tanked. I'm not saying that, you know, this going on the exchange tanked it. That's, that's not, you know, it could have been a possibility. We, we don't know, but this is something that happened. And then after a lot of ZRX was actually withdrawn from the exchange itself, price began to actually right, uh, go right back up. You can see it happen again. When the supply decreased, price increased. And when the supply increased once again, the price decreased. Another way you can think about this is just like any other good. Um, just to take an analogy and kind of zoom out of what we're actually looking at. You know, if, if there's something like gold and there's a fixed supply of gold and the fixed supply of gold increases, in the world by a lot, then the price of gold is, you know, potentially, um, well, economically speaking, it should technically decrease if it's just a normal good. And if a lot of gold, let's say, is, is lost or, you know, converted into something else and it's gone, the total supply of gold decreases and the price will probably increase. Now, that's kind of another way to think about this as well. If there's not many of a certain cryptocurrency or token on an exchange, then there's not as much selling ability of that certain cryptocurrency. 
So this is one way that we can look at altcoin trading that is very different from how most people trade, you know, just looking at RSI or something quite simple. This is something a little bit more complex that I think can give you quite the edge. Now we can also go to any other um, coin here. I could just pick, you know, plenty of coins that I haven't even looked at, such as uh, Link. You know, I haven't looked at Link yet. We can look at the one day of Link. Um, doesn't look like too much. Okay, so here it is. This is Link on all exchanges, and I'm gonna change that to Binance because that's more interesting to me. Okay, so Binance here. So you can see the supply of Link in the value. You can see it right there, 98.55K, you know, 98, 98.4K. This is the current, not K, uh, million, 90, 98 million, you know, and so on. So there's currently $236 million worth of Link on Binance. Now what we actually see here is you know typically we expect when a large decrease in supply occurs the price will 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 increase that kind of happened here uh it went from a price of 2.57 up to a high of about what 2.59 but it also really decreased a lot so you have to think about this not you know black or white um because it's it's not going to happen every time where we see a large decrease in the supply the price is just going to increase you know and continue to do so because here you can see the opposite did occur but this data is still quite important because you're looking at the total supply of the you know unit of value that you're actually trading. It's I would say that's very important. And if I look at the seven day, you know you can see this was interesting. A large amount of link decreased. We went from what 98 million, 99 million rounded to 68 million. Just a large decrease in link. And I would say really not much happened, just a bit of consolidation. And then when the link um, uh, went back to normal, you can see that, I, I would say that I don't know how much of an effect this actually had because we went from here, you know, just back to the same. Perhaps this was someone just moving link um, into a wallet and then just putting that same amount right back in. Per perhaps that's what had occurred. And you, know, you can see it even happening here. Where $1.3 million worth of link was um, sent to Binance, you know, probably that was here, I believe. You know, you can see the percent supply on exchanges goes from 6.83 up to 9.87. Um, so yeah, with these kinds of things, I don't always know how to, to interpret that, to be honest. But if we want to look at something even a little bit more short term that doesn't include that kind of crazy jump, we can look at this here. And you can see just the total supply of link has been decreasing. Uh, not really by a lot though, as you can see. Interesting enough, when Link did increase in supply a good amount, yeah, price began to decrease and it tried to increase in supply again and prices continued to decrease. I can look at other coins as well. AGI, let's look at Singularity Net. Yeah, so this, this one has made a lot more sense because we just see a decrease in supply and price increased, as you can see. That's on all exchanges. If I just go to Binance for AGI, uh, yeah, you can see the same thing happening. Just the supply was decreasing and price increased. You know, if I was to say what is the biggest effect on these altcoin prices, I would honestly say that the price of Bitcoin and the price of other altcoins is most important or correlation rates. You know, correlation of the overall cryptocurrency market to a specific altcoin. Second most important, perhaps I would say maybe a tie between supply and demand. Supply being exactly what you're looking at here, total supply of a cryptocurrency. Demand being looking at something like vcdep.io and looking at the limit orders between limit orders to buy and limit orders to sell and seeing how many people want to buy something versus how many people want to sell something. So those are just a few factors that if you're serious about altcoin trading, that's probably the next step that you might want to take um, if you want to, to have access to this advanced data and be able to take advantage of it. You know, I, I could just keep scrolling on, on here forever because I find this very, very interesting. Um, if you don't find this interesting, then, you know, you can always just go back to RSI and MFI and those and uh, keep on do what you're doing what you're, what you're doing. We can look at MFT. Ooh, is that the right chart? Okay, that's, that's interesting. Very strange increases and decreases. All right, let's go to Binance. I don't really care about the other exchanges of that. Okay, so yeah, total supply was decreasing. We went from 3.9 uh, billion 
down to 3.93 billion. Price increased, you can see that, and so on. We can also look at F, you know, the biggest asset probably on here. Let's look at the one day of F. And I'm gonna look at, I could look at all exchanges or I could look at Binance. A lot going on here, as you can see, lots, lots going on. We had an increase in supply here and then price dumped, which was interesting. Uh, but we also did have a decrease in supply here and, and price fell a little bit, but not as much as this. You know, a lot of F was added during this consolidation stage and then price just dipped. And then a lot of F was added again and price just dipped again. And it's gonna be interesting to see, uh, let me just zoom in a little bit more. It's gonna be interesting to see what's gonna happen to the overall supply of F, you know, of, of ETH. If it, if it goes up or down and how that impacts the price. And I can also just go to just Binance just to see. Oh, that's very different. If that's the same chart, that is a very, 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 very different chart that we're looking at here. Still very interesting though. Look at this, a steady increase in the supply led to, potentially led to this drop. That's interesting. Just this steady increase in supply was just, you know, a lot more potential sellers coming in and you can see how many transfers in were coming in. Good amount. All right, guys, so this is another one of those kind of more complex um, blockchain related kind of topics that I always like to go into. This is a site where, you know, again, like I had said, I could just scroll on this site and show you many examples, but I think that it's better for you guys to be more interactive with the site and actually, you know, look at it yourself. Because this kind of data, uh, you know, is not really available in other markets. You can't always see the total supply of, you know, something. Uh, but in, in, with, with cryptocurrencies, it's all digital, and you have advantage of having very, very good data on those digital assets. Uh, so right here, I think that this is a wonderful tool. Uh, and, you know, well done to Glassnode Studio, and also well done to Token Al Analyst, because both of these sites are providing free data, or I, I think that this is free, I, I don't know for sure, um, that are just so helpful. So with that, guys, play around with this. I'm going to link in the description, and I'll see you guys soon.